it is not just enough to calculate uh, delta tau to compensate dispersion. You need to know the exact way in which the dispersion is acting on a system. So for that, we need to uh, do a little bit of mathematical derivation of how the uh, amplitude and the phase of the pulse uh, evolves as it propagates through the fiber. Because once I know the amplitude and the phase evolution, I can represent the fiber as a linear system uh, and I want, basically I want to know what is the transfer function of the fiber. Once I know it's a linear system, we assume it's a linear system, I want to know if I go in with a certain electric field uh, with a certain uh, frequency domain uh, representation, what is the uh, transfer function of the system so that I can now design a filter uh, which can compensate for the, uh, the, the changes introduced by the linear system. So the motivation for the next 15 minutes is to actually derive a pulse propagation equation so that we can find the transfer function of the dispersive system. Okay? So let's say you uh, consider the fundamental mode propagation which means you are talking about a single mode fiber and you are talking about the propagation of the fundamental mode of the fiber. So this fundamental mode is represented by fxy. It has a transverse distribution fxy. I'm, I'm representing it, I'm starting with the frequency domain representation because all what we know about dispersion is the fact that different frequencies propagate with different speeds. So we start from the frequency domain representation of the uh, signal that is propagating through the uh, fiber. Uh, x is a polarization, input polarization. B0 omega represents the uh, frequency, specific frequency of a pulse that is at z equal to 0. So at z equal to 0, the frequency omega, the strength of the frequency omega is represented by B. Now that is propagating through the length of the fiber and z is the uh, evolving variable. So this is the initial amplitude corresponding to the frequency. omega and of course beta is the propagation constant. Uh, as I said earlier, your beta uh, B0 omega is, so if, if you are trying to transmit a pulse at the beginning of the fiber, you have a certain time profile and correspondingly you have a certain frequency uh, distribution. What you have written here is the way one such frequency, such frequency omega, how it evolves as it propagates through the fiber. The question is f x y does it depend on omega we know of course um, b of 0 omega the strength uh, of uh, the initial amplitude at any frequency is having this distribution so depending on omega you have, b will have different values the question we are asking is is this dependent on omega uh, f x y remember it's the fundamental mode of the fiber and when we do a mode solving uh, when we did the scalar wave approximation and uh, we did the uh, Bessel function solution for the mode, we assumed that the core index is constant. We did not really consider the fact that the refractive index can be a function of frequency. So strictly speaking, fxy is actually a function of, uh, it depends on omega because the refractive index of the core is strictly a function of omega. But uh, for now, on the first approximation, we think that we, we say that the change in refractive index across the frequencies that we are considering, if we are not considering a very large frequency band, if our frequency band is limited, the change in the core refractive index as a function of omega over that band is negligibly small, so that the solution, uh, the Gaussian solution we got remains almost the same. There is no change in the Gaussian solution as a function of frequency. Otherwise, things become complicated. It means that different frequencies, we will have to start considering different modal profiles. Uh, how small is small? So long as the spectral width is much smaller than omega naught, the carrier frequency, this approximation is valid. Okay, so the different uh, components of the pulse. So what is the motivation now? We want to know the equation that describes the evolution of this pulse as a function of z so that I can write down a transfer function and once I know the transfer function, I can invert the transfer function to do a dispersion compensation. 
So at, as a function of z, the evolution is very simple because you can think about it like a plane wave which has a certain amplitude and propagates as a function of, uh, uh, you know, as it propagates, it accumulates a, a, a phase beta as it propagates along the z direction. It's of the general form e power j omega t minus beta z. So uh, how do you get the uh, amplitude in the time domain? So the approach is that once you know how each frequency is evolving, uh, you work it out for all the frequencies, uh, you do an inverse Fourier transform, then I will calculate what the amplitude is. Because So it's like this. So I have a certain uh, time domain uh, pulse after modulation that propagates through the fiber. So this is the length of the fiber. So what I do is I do a Fourier transform, find what this B of omega is, B at zero omega is. Uh, each frequency content I uh, propagate through the fiber using this relation minus J beta Z. So at the end I get a beta, sorry B Z omega after it has propagated through the fiber. Uh, this B at Z omega is different from B0 omega because it has accumulated different phase. The different frequency contents not only have accumulated different phase, they have also accumulated each frequency, the phase accumulated by each frequency component is different because beta is a function of omega. So we will evaluate that. But once I have this beta Z of omega, I can do an inverse Fourier transform uh, and then uh, arrive at, so this was A0 of T. I can do, I can arrive at A uh, Z of T. So the pulse broadening, of course, we know that it results from the fact that beta is a function of omega. So again, the assumption we carry on, continue to uh, carry on that delta omega is less than omega naught. So if you have uh, omega naught, so this is uh, the x axis is omega, uh, this is omega naught then the propagation constant beta. So what we are assuming is that the region of our interest is over delta omega, a small region around the center frequency. If that delta omega is really small, so beta at omega, uh, so all what we are saying is beta at omega, let's say it's some arbitrary function of omega and this is omega naught. So at any omega which is not omega naught but which is very close to omega naught, I'm saying that this beta at omega is uh, can be represented in terms of uh, beta at omega naught using this slope. And this relation need not be linear, so we can account for higher order term through the Taylor expansion. So the Taylor expansion is beta naught, beta naught is beta at uh, omega naught plus the slope d beta by d omega times delta omega, where delta omega is the separation of the frequency that I am talking about from the center frequency. Remember we are considering the propagation of a specific uh, frequency in the spectrum. Uh, but uh, as I said this need not be linear so you can add the higher order terms. So this is half uh, d square beta by d omega square at evaluated at omega naught delta omega square plus the third order term and so on. This is a standard Taylor expansion and this assumption is true we can truncate it at three terms, assuming that the uh, variation of beta versus omega is uh, can be approximated up to uh, three terms. The linearity is, uh, I mean, you can approximate it as a polynomial of uh, kind of third order, provided uh, the delta omega is very, very small, provided the omegas that you are expanding it about are not very far away from omega naught which was the assumption in any case because we already said that the pulse spread in the frequency domain is very small when compared to the carrier frequency. So the Taylor series expansion is valid. So now that I know uh, this ex uh, to expand beta as a function of omega, I'm going to substitute that into the uh, frequency propagation equation. But before that, let's identify that d beta by d omega is beta 1 d square beta by uh, d omega square, the first derivative of beta 1 is beta 2 and the second derivative of uh, beta 1, which is again uh, third derivative of beta is beta 3. Uh, this is group velocity. This is uh, group velocity dispersion parameter which we have already set, set, seen earlier. This is picosecond square per meter or kilometer and this is the third order uh, dispersion parameter. And in general, I can represent my beta as 
beta naught. Now beta naught is the beta which is 2 pi by lambda into n and this n there is no confusion. This n is not a variable, this n is a constant because beta naught is the beta evaluated at omega equal to omega naught. So this n is the constant uh, refractive index at omega naught. So this is a constant. Beta 1 times delta omega, delta omega is a variable depending on which omega I am taking. Across the pulse I have several omega, so depending on which omega I am choosing, I have delta omega changing. But beta 1 is a constant, beta 1 is a slope f beta at omega naught. Similarly, beta 2 is a constant, beta 3 is a constant, the only variable here is uh, now it, this, this uh, uh, is, is omega which means I can calculate the beta at any omega in terms of beta at the center frequency. So how does this uh, expansion, uh, how do we use this expansion? Um,